Hey, how you doing? This is Gene Averso. I'm here with an interview we have for the podcast. Um, we're interviewing Casper Kelly. How are you doing? I am great. Great to be here. So we checked out um, the uh, the Adult Swim Yule Log. Um, really loved it. And, um, you know, just going off the top here, what um, when you uh, watched, you know, the Yule Log specials like on TV, what, uh, what about that was so uh, such a novelty? Well, I don't... It just seemed like a a funny thing to start with and then uh, zag in a different direction off of. And I and I was watching a Yule log last holidays and uh, you know the tight shot of the fireplace and I just got this image of sort of slightly fo- out of focus legs crossing the frame and hearing dialogue and it just seemed like an interesting entry into a story and i love the idea of like advertising it as one thing and it being something else yeah uh, you know like a like a prize hopefully um, yeah yeah definitely it uh reminded me a little bit of barbarian where it's like yes. every, mm-hmm. yeah if you saw that because it's like i you know i love the i love the film because it's like it felt like every five or ten minutes it kept changing like genres and everything yes uh yeah i watched barbarian uh after we shot and I noticed some similarities of like, uh, yeah, the Air, Airbnb and, uh, uh, there's, we both have characters named mother. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, I felt like, all right, good. It's in the ether. That's just in the zeitgeist, you know? Uh, and I, I love that movie. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, going off of that for movies, can you talk about any inspirations you might've had for the film? Um, it seems like, horror really lends itself to holiday Christmas films for some reasons for some reason I think horror movies are a good just a good genre to you can add a lot of different things to it and it's still a horror movie you know it just gives you a lot of leeway um, like a good uh, stock of a stew you can add all Mm -hmm. kinds of ingredients and it still tastes like a good stew Um, yes I, I may not have answered your question Oh no! Yeah. Um, do you have any um, like horror Christmas movies that you like? Any shows? Uh, I you know I don't know a ton. I mean I know Silent Night Deadly Night. Mm-hmm. People have asked me that question, and then I looked up, and there's a ton. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Violent Night uh, just came out, which I'm gonna watch. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't I don't know a ton. But I'm gonna learn more about it. Is there one you would recommend that you like? Oh yeah, definitely check out Christmas uh, Christmas Evil. Christmas Evil. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's uh, that one's like really weird. It's just like this uh, killer Santa Claus. This guy just like goes around, um, I guess, like killing people dressed as Santa. So, really oh, cool. Yeah, and then yeah, if you can check it out. Um, can you talk a little bit about the rehearsal process for the start of the film? There was this really, you know, I love the long, this one long shot of the log and then you have like the two characters talking and then it slowly becomes this like you know the film that would that we watch for the rest of uh the film the rest of the movie well shockingly we didn't really have a rehearsal process i asked for one and Mm -hmm. i was told we don't really have the money for that um but thankfully um justin miles who plays alex uh, emailed me and said, can I get the numbers of the rest of the actors? I want to do some rehearsals just two days before. Um, so thankfully he did. And, uh, and that helped a lot. So it was nice. And there is, there is a, uh, I, I, rehearsing is great, but there also can be an advantage to something happening for the first time on camera. And you might catch something unique of like two people who are almost meeting for the first time or who are doing the scene for the first time. Uh, So we got a little bit of that too. But uh, in those scenes you're talking about, luckily um, we we did get in a little rehearsal, but not much because it was just a very tight schedule. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it looked great though on camera. I love like just, um, you know, the idea that you had where it's just these two characters and then they out of focus and then you're slowly drawn in um thank you you yeah of course um can you talk a little bit about pitching this idea to adult swim i know you've been working there for a while but um 
did they want something similar to Too Many Cooks, or I was just curious. They were very, uh, very generous in in terms of freedom, and they they were kind of on board right away. The first pitch was merely the uh, what I just told you of mm -hmm. start off as a yule log, and then and then you see legs, and it becomes a it becomes a story, and then uh, I got inspired, and I we were probably going to do it as like another 11 minute too many cooks 4 a.m. type thing. But I said, um, you know, what if we what if we made it into a movie? And they mm -hmm. were like, uh, well, if you can do it for about the same amount of money. Yeah, let's yeah. do it as a movie. So and I was very happy for that. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, yeah, I was um, wondering, did you film in Atlanta as well? Or can you talk a little yes. bit about Oh, okay. We filmed uh, in Atlanta, and that house is in Decatur, um, it, and it was great because it kind of looks like a mountain house because I kind of wrote it to be like in Blue Ridge, Georgia, which is a sort of a vacation mountain area in Georgia, but we couldn't really afford to put up the crew for three weeks there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we were lucky to find that place, and I, and I think they're shooting a lot of horror movies there, so you'll probably see that house more many more yeah. times. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of tax incentives, I guess. And then um, going off of that, um, you know, some of the creatures and the creature design in this film, I was really curious um, uh, just the process behind that because I loved um, your work in Mandy. I love uh, Cheddar Goblin, which is like one of my favorite little sequences in that movie. Can you talk a little bit about the creatures in this film? Because there was like aliens and there's a scary U-log, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh Luckily, we have um, this great community here in Atlanta, and we, we here we have the Center for Puppetry Arts, which is this wonderful museum and theater for puppetry. So we have a lot of people that know puppetry here. And then the the person I I worked with, who I met doing Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell, and did too many cooks with them, and pretty much everything, is this uh, uh, wonderful person Shane Morton of uh, Silver Scream Studios who uh, is just a is just a super fan of horror and horror effects and is the type of guy who's like um, I need what about a guy who's just covered with um, noses and he'll be like oh I got a I got a crate of noses I can that's no problem I'll just give me a, just give me an hour I'll go get the noses you know he's mm -hmm. that type of guy so yeah he's wonderful He's got yeah. a great can-do attitude. Yeah, definitely. It really showed on the, you know the film. Some of the you know designs were so creepy and everything. Are there any other holidays you would like to cover? I guess in any <laughs> sort of your work. Uh, I haven't thought about it, but it's I pro and they've probably all been done. But I'd love to find one that hasn't been done. Do you think that they probably have all been done though? Has like Arbor Day been done or St. Pat? I'm sure St. Patrick's Day's been done. Uh, yeah. I gotta think about this. Um, um, I'm not too sure. I know, I know, Leprechaun. That'd yeah, be like St. Patrick's Day, but yeah, Memorial Day. Maybe. Yeah. I gotta think about that. Well, Thanksgiving okay. would be fun. Come on, I mean, that would yeah, be fun. <laughs> a lot of a uh, lot, lot to do there. Yes. Um, but yeah. I'm um, just kind of wrapping up here. Um, I had uh, one listener question. I just wanted to ask you before you go. Um, there was a bumper because he worked at Cartoon Network at Ultimate. There was a series of bumpers that came out in the '90s um, that I was a really big fan of. I think they scared me a little bit. It was the Scooby Doo project? Yes. I was wondering if you could say just a little bit about that before. Yes, I worked on that, um, and it, it was bumpers, but it was designed to you can put them all together to mm -hmm. make a show, which we did, and uh, it was super exciting and. Uh, I put my mom in it as one of the witnesses. Oh, okay. And, uh, we just shot it with it. I mean, we shot it handheld, and we were very delighted that they were able to comp cartoon characters in this shaky camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a real delight, and it got written up a lot. Like it was in TV Guide back when that was a thing, and uh, yeah. And and now enough time has passed that I'll get asked to do interviews about it because people who grew up on it are now journalists <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah i was a big fan of watching those bumpers uh, um when i was a kid so yeah they were cool but thank awesome. you yeah and then just before we go um 
where can uh, people find you at? Any socials you want to promote? Um, you could watch the Ulog special on HBO Max and anything else? Yeah, the Ulog special is on HBO Max. The ending song is on Spotify if you want to listen to it. You can also buy it digitally, the uh, movie. And uh, I am currently on Twitter and Instagram as Hey Casper Kelly. Uh, we'll see how much longer I'm on Twitter. Or yeah. Uh, but I've not jumped over to Mastodon or anything yet. Uh, if anybody's Same. got any tips, tell me. But uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> me neither. But yeah, um, you know, thank you so much for uh, joining us today, Casper. Uh, and this was a great watch. So just want to say thank you. Thank you so much, Dean. It was a pleasure. Cool, cool. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Been professionally unprofessional. <laughs>